Hey everyone, it's Blake here from ChessPathways.com, and in today's openings video, we'll be discussing the Albin Counter Gambit. The Albin Counter Gambit is a response to the Queen's Gambit, so the game begins d4, d5, and white plays their most popular move here, pawn to c4, the Queen's Gambit. And black has many well-known moves here. We have c6, the Slav defense, e6, d takes c4, knight c6, a bunch of possible moves here. But in the Albin Counter Gambit, black's going to play e5 and strike at the center right away, offering white a free pawn here if white wants to accept the gambit. And white definitely should accept this gambit and play d takes e5. It wouldn't be so great to let black play that move for free. That's a move that black often has to take a lot of time to prepare in the queen's gambit. So if black's willing to make this move early as a pawn sacrifice, white should definitely accept it. And now black's going to not take here on c4. That could be met by exchanging queens, uh, and black would lose the right to castle, but black's going to play pawn to d4. So this is the real starting position of the Albin counter gambit. We see black's down a pawn, but this d4 pawn makes development a little bit hard here for white. They can't put this knight on their best square. And it's not so easy to open up this bishop to develop with e3 either. There's going to be some calculation involved there, uh, because black would, of course, get the option to take here on e3. And also, this e5 pawn could be weak. We're going to see some lines where black can try to gang up on this e5 pawn and try to win their pawn back. So let's see how the game can go from here. And we're going to start by looking at a trap that white can fall into. I mentioned this move e3, and at first glance it looks like a very reasonable move. If black takes there, it looks like white just gets to exchange queens off. And if black does not take there, it looks like white can just take on d4 next turn. So if you're playing against someone who's never faced the Albin counter gambit before, you might see this move. But unfortunately, this is not going to work out very well for white. Black can play here bishop b4 check, forcing white to bring a piece here to the, to the d2 square. Uh, and after white plays bishop d2... Black does not have to save this bishop here on b4. Black can throw in the move d takes e3. And here, black's already better. White really has to play f takes e3. Uh, but even if white plays f takes e3, now queen h4 turns out to be pretty strong here from black. White would have to play g3. And now another nice in-between move, queen e4. Black still hasn't saved this bishop all this time. And now the, the rook's under attack here in the corner. Not to mention black's definitely going to get a pawn back. We see that all these pawns are very weak. Uh, but often white will not do this. After bishop b4 check, bishop d2, d takes c3, white might try to take this bishop, and now they're falling for this well-known trap. Black's going to get to play e takes f2 here, and now we see the king cannot take this pawn because the queen on d1 would be hanging. This is a nice little deflection. And if white were to play king to e2, go ahead and pause the video and think about what black could play here. All right, if you suggested bishop g4, that doesn't work because of knight to f3. Uh, if you take here and make a queen, white simply gets to swap off queens and then win their, uh, their piece back here. And this just leads to equal material. Black really only has one winning move here after king to e2, and that is playing f takes g1 equals knight. And this turns out to be completely winning here for black. White does not have time to take here and exchange queens. And once white recaptures this knight, now bishop g4 does work and white loses that queen. So this e3 move is considered very bad. White should not play this move. And if you're playing the black side of the Albin counter gambit, make sure you know how to exploit it when white makes this mistake. You can just play bishop b4 check, and all the tactics will work out in your favor. So instead, let's take a look at how white should play from this position. White's most popular move here is to play knight to f3. We'll come back later and discuss some alternatives here. This is a nice move, though. This helps defend the e5 pawn and attacks the d4 pawn. Black generally plays knight c6, which is good for the same reasons. It defends the d4 pawn and attacks the e5 pawn. Uh, you might be tempted to play here c5 and just really solidify this d4 pawn before you play knight c6. But this turns out not to be so great, because now white does just get to play e3, trying to tear down black's uh, annoying pawn here on d4, and you no longer have any bishop b4 check ideas here. So this is considered pretty good for white. So instead, after knight f3, knight c6, white can play here g3. Uh, since you can't really play e3 too easily, the bishop will often come to the g2 square. And now we're going to see how black tries to win their pawn back here on e5. Black can play knight g to e7, intending to bring this knight to the g6 square. Bishop g2, knight g6. In this particular line, white just kind of gives that pawn up. Uh, white just makes sure they get castled really early, get castled before black does. Uh, but black's going to be able to win their pawn back now. Knight g takes e5, knight to d2, just defending the c4 pawn. Uh, bishop e7, b3. 
White's hoping they can go after this D pawn, just like Black went after their E5 pawn. This bishop's coming to B2 next, and there's going to be some pressure here. But Black has everything under control here. After castles, bishop B2. Black can simply exchange off this knight and bring their bishop to F6. And this D4 pawn is not going to be able to be won by White. This position's been reached a few times in tournament chess at a high level. And in practice, it seems to be roughly equal. Black has held his own from this position. Coming back here to our starting position, we looked at playing knight to f3. Another very popular move here for white is to play a3. And if you remember the trap I showed at the beginning of this video, you might understand the purpose of this move. White's just making sure there's no bishop b4 check ideas, and this might mean that white's intending to play e3, trying to tear down black's pawn here in the center. The downside, of course, is that this does not develop a piece, and so black can just play knight c6 now and attack this e5 pawn. Uh, white could consider playing f4 here, just really solidifying this pawn before playing knight f3, but just like in the analogous line we looked at where black could consider playing c5, black here would probably want to play f6, which can sometimes be a risky move. It does expose the king's diagonal, but you really want to start tearing down white's center here, and this is really the only way to do it if they've played f4. And after, for example, e takes f6, knight takes f6... Looks like white's going to re regret playing this move f4. Looks like black's starting to get a nice lead in development here. White has all their pieces still on the back rank, and white's king could be a little bit exposed. So that's very rarely seen, just like c5 is very rarely seen in the knight f3 line. So coming back here, after knight c6, white often just plays knight to f3, knight g to e7. Black's once again trying to go after this, uh, this e5 pawn. And here white sometimes plays e3. A more popular move is to play b4, which also makes use of this pawn's placement on a3, just trying to grab some more space on the queen side. So we're going to look at both here. Uh, if white plays e3 here, black would be able to play here bishop to g4, just pin this knight. And because this move exists, it's not going to be so easy for white to succeed in just tearing down black's center and maintaining their e5 pawn. So white can't really take here on d4 right now. Black would just uh, remove the defender here, play bishop takes f3, and uh, white's strong-looking center is going to fall apart, of course. After queen takes f3, black would be able to take here on d4. So instead, after bishop g4, white can try to reduce the pressure now with bishop e2, but another very nice thing that bishop g4 did was it let this rook watch over the queen. So black does not have to worry now about playing uh, d takes e3 now, uh, white can't really just take the queen here and cause black problems because the rook would just take the open file. So queen takes d8, rook takes d8, bishop takes e3, but black finally gets to win their pawn back. They can take here on f3 and take on e5. And it looks like it doesn't work at first because b7 hangs in the end, but so does the c4 pawn. Material turns out to be equal at the end of this line. White does have the bishop pair for the time being, but this knight's pretty active. It's attacking the b2 pawn, it's attacking the bishop. And white's probably not going to keep that bishop pair for too long. One of the main continuations is b4, knight takes e3, f takes e3. And the game is approximately equal. So that was a line coming back here after e3. I said we were also going to look at b4, and this is possible. But black is once again going to win their pawn back here. Knight to g6, bishop b2, a5, trying to soften up white's pawns here a little bit. After white plays b5, which is essentially forced, you don't really want to take here on a5. That really isolates your a pawn, helps this rook become active. So b5, knight takes e5, black won their pawn back. And it looks like this d4 pawn is hanging, but once again, this c4 pawn is 2. That once again becomes a factor. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Again, taking on d4 would be met by knight takes c4. So white could try e3 instead, just adding some pressure here to the d4 pawn and defending their c4 pawn. But black has an adequate answer here in bishop to e6, just developing a piece and renewing the threat here to c4. And that move is enough to get black essentially a quality here. After bishop takes d4, knight takes c4, the game is roughly equal. So we covered knight to f3, we covered this a3 sideline. One move that I found very interesting was if white plays e4 right now. This is a really nice exploitation of the en passant mechanics of chess, right? Because usually... You could always give an in-between check and then make a capture, but because of how en passant works, you, you know, you can't do that if you're black. You have to play en passant right away or not at all. And of course, if you take en passant, white just gets to play queen takes d8. So playing e4 instead of e3 really circumvents this trap that we saw at the beginning of the video. Black can't just play bishop b4 and then take on e3. Unfortunately for white, though, this still doesn't work out too well for them. After knight c6, the e5 pawn's under attack. 
White's main option to be consistent here is to play f4, but once again, f6 can be played, e takes f6, knight takes f6, and white does have a lot of space here, but black has scored well here in practice. White just has no development here at all, the king's a little bit exposed, and black already has two very well-placed knights, and a space advantage here with this pawn on d4, to counterbalance white's space advantage over here on the e and f files. So, interesting option. White has played this, white has played bishop d3 in this position, but probably white has better options to handle the Alban counter gambit than this e4 option. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you click that link down in the description and visit chesspathways.com and get signed up there. It's totally free to join, only takes 5 seconds, and I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you join our community. So please let me help you become the best chess player you can be, and join us on chesspathways.com. Thanks, and I'll see you there.